So yeah, all right. Hi everyone, this is Trisha Soderstrom with Abounding in Hope Talks, and I am so excited today to be able to bring to you a new friend of mine, Andrea Fair, Fair is that correct? Fair? Yeah. Okay. And um, Andrea recently interviewed me for her Flying Free Ministries, and I just love talking to you so much, Andrea, that I wanted to have you on my podcast and share you with my listeners, because I think we have a lot in common. And I know that you have a lot to share with my community. So if you could just take a few minutes and just let us know a little bit about yourself and how your ministry came about. Well, I'm so thankful to be here. So thanks a lot, Tricia. And it's an honor. Um, I am a wife of 20 years, a mother of four. Our kids range from 11 to 16. Um, and I also struggled with chronic illness for 15 years. Um, I thought about being a speaker. I dreamt about it. I cried about it. I was still sick. So being it was, it didn't seem possible, but little by little, God had a different plan. Um, and eventually he led me to writing a book, um, freaking out to flying free. And from there, he's like, okay, now go to ministry and love on people who are struggling and need hope and freedom. And I'm like, ha, what, how? <laughs> and it's been a journey ever since, but it's been pretty amazing. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And there are a lot of us out there who need that, that encouragement too. I know just in my community, it, it just overwhelms me how many other women are really struggling with chronic illness and trying to raise a family and some are working, you know, so it's, it's really, um, a struggle. So I wanted to talk to you today, um, you know, about your chronic illness, about how you manage um, being a mom with a chronic illness. That was one of the, the things that I connected with you on, because I remember being a mom with little kids, with a newborn, um, and trying to balance everything and trying to figure out how can I care for them when I can't get up off the couch. So can you talk to us a little bit about your experience? You bet I can. Um, yeah, I had, did not dream that I would be in, unable to care for my kids how I wanted to. I always imagined how I dreamed of since I was tiny. Um, my illness set in, in about, about a year into our marriage and we had our first, our only daughter actually, um, in 2003. So we, it was a risk. We didn't know if having kids would exacerbate things or we'd heard stories about some people had um, illnesses and then they went away. Mine was a mysterious illness for most of it. So we didn't know what we were dealing with. Um, so yeah, I remember nursing Allie and crying and going, okay, God, what have we done? And how are we gonna do this? And um, I remember having, I'd have fatigue attacks. So um, my whole body would shut down, feel like someone was choking me and then I wouldn't be able to speak and my arms and legs would go limp. So it looked a lot like a seizure or a stroke. Um, so yeah, I definitely remember laying on the floor and having my kids come and bring me things or phoning my dad before an attack hit and saying, can you come? Cause it's happening. Um, so a lot of mom guilt, a lot of um, grief. Um, and then as I journeyed with those things, they didn't serve me great. <laughs> so I was like, I have, I have to figure out what to do. Like, obviously God's not taking this illness away. And I, and he let us have four kids. I remember being stuck in bed and I could, was so weak. I couldn't actually take the sheet off my body. And I just remember crying and praying and being like, Hey God, like what, what, what have you done? Like, why did you let this happen? And, um, and he just spoke to my heart and he just said, you, you bring me glory just how you are. And I was, I was so mad. <laughs> I was like, I don't care about glory right now. I want to go play with my babies. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, and yet I, I needed his words because he had a lot of teaching to do to my heart about just being and learning to be. So little by little, I learned how to be and how um, the gift of presence, just being there, laying on the couch, not able to do things. I learned that my kids were learning compassion. Um, mm -hmm. I learned that when I was just laying on the couch, unable to do the things I thought I should do, I was more available and they would come to me. Um, I learned how to receive and different people, God nudged their heart to either clean our house or bring groceries or those kinds of things. And as hard as that can be to receive sometimes, it was also actually a mutual blessing for us and for them to be able to serve. So yeah, we, we learned 
we learned how to manage symptoms. And I know, especially when I was bringing home newborns, um, I'd be like, your only job today, Andrea, is to keep the baby alive, <laughs> put in a load of laundry and have some idea about food. You don't even have to make it. Just like if we have eggs, great. If we have mm -hmm. cereal, perfect. But some idea for your husband when he comes home and he's tired. <laughs> yeah. That it's a real balance, you know, to try to do the things that moms do and wives do when we don't have the energy and we have to figure out how to manage that, um, you know, not just our time, but also our energy. Because if we do too much, then we could be down for a few days and, um, you know, it's just, it's a real balance. But the mom guilt, that's something that I see a lot of conversation online about is, um, moms who feel guilty because their kids have to entertain themselves or because they can't take them to the places their kids want to go. And, um, you know, so how did you, um, how did, how did God speak to your heart about that? And how did you, um, transform your thinking? I want to mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, honestly, I've struggled with mom guilt this week. So I, <laughs> I, I think it's a journey right? We're always on just like, am I going to feel guilty in this moment? Or what is the truth? Um, for this week, it was like, they have Jesus and he satisfies. Therefore, let them mess up if they're going to mess up and come to me. Um, back then, it was learning that taking care of me was taking care of them. And that was a really hard lesson. Like I, I fought it. Um, I fought my energy. I, I'm a pusher. So I'm like, well, I can, I'll just I'll just woman up and I'll just do this anyways as I'm falling over and my mm -hmm. husband's like, maybe just have a nap. <laughs> no, I'm fine. Uh, so I learned to accept my limitations and that was how I could deal with my mom. I'm, I think also once I started to accept my limitations, then it was just more of a fact. And so the guilt didn't have as much power over me because it was more just, this is how it is. Like, I do not have any control over this. So I had to do the mental work of beginning to believe the truth that this is who I am and this is what is happening in my body. Therefore, I have to work within it and this is what it looks like. And so I think it was just retraining my brain to believe that this is who I am and I'm allowed to be here right now. Therefore, I am okay and it's okay to get help and it's okay to hire somebody to take the kids for a day. So I had a whole day of, of either if I felt good, go get something done or just rest. And building those, building in the tools and the time I needed to take care of me so that I could be more available for them. Okay. Now, one of the things I experienced as a mom with chronic illness was that sometimes my kids complained about it. Did you ever find that? Did that ever happen in your family? <laughs> um, you know, they, they didn't. I think, I feel like now that they're teens, um, they're starting to have to process that, especially um, maybe my older two, because basically their whole childhood, I was sick. Mm -hmm. Um, and so now maybe those, the reality of what they went through is more obvious to them. Um, they complained about me homeschooling them. <laughs> 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 they complained about, uh, uh, yeah, things like that, but they didn't necessarily speak those words to me. I think maybe God was protecting me because he knew I couldn't, couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think maybe we had a, a pretty decent support. We did have a really good support system of, oh, hey, you're going to so-and-so's. And I'm blessed that my parents live in the area too. So, okay. and I think they even, because they discovered the fun I, I let them have or we created when I could. So I remember we would be like, okay, let's go to the forest because we can right now. And maybe we couldn't stay for four hours, but we could stay for 45 minutes or whatever. So I think that was helpful. But yeah. Yeah. I think in my situation, it was a little different because my kids were also sick. You're so awesome. on their good days, I may not have had a good day. And then on my good days, they may not have had a good day. So it was, it seemed like we were always sick. And I think oh. that it became a frustration for them. You know, we're it was sure. hard to balance uh, finding the fun, the good days to do fun things, but we still did. It was just a little bit more difficult, more challenging than if I were the only one with an, with an illness. So um, I was listening to one of your other interviews and um, also reading around on your website, and I noticed that you are an exercise advocate, kind of like I am. And, um, you know, 
a big complaint for people, especially women who have a lot to juggle. And then we have to balance our energy. Um, what motivated you to exercise? And when you were really sick, how did you, did you ever fall away from exercising? And if you did, how did you get back into it? Wow. Good questions. Um, I was a not crazy active person, but I enjoyed a good walk. Like I went before I was sick and volleyball and biking and those kinds of things. So when that got taken suddenly from me, it was a big deal. Like I, I had so many days trapped in bed or trapped in our apartment. We were on the fourth floor. <laughs> it was like, Oh great. By the time I get down the stairs, I am done for the day. Um, so because of that great loss for a chunk of time, I, I feel like um, any chance I got to be active was like this tremendous gift. So even if I got to play volleyball for a half an hour with a friend, it was like, oh my goodness. So I think I sought out activity on those days when I felt good. Um, my frustration was when I'd finally feel good and could actually get in a little bit of a workout, um, I would, I couldn't necessarily keep it up, right? Because mm -hmm. I, you know, three days later, you're in bed for three days. And so that was really, really hard. Um, I was also motivated because I gained weight with my monkeys, right? And so I'm like, oh, I need to not stay this way. Um, eventually I joined Weight Watchers and that was helpful to me. Um, God worked it out that I could get a ride so I didn't have to do that energy. Um, and uh, I remember sharing there about my chronic illness and hoping really bad and, and, and the struggle with exercise. And I was just like, I can't even do it like so much of the time. Like, is it even worth it kind of thing? And I remember hoping that someone would be like, yeah, you, have a, you get a pass, you have chronic illness. And they didn't say that. <laughs> they, they're like, have you heard of the sit and be fit um, TV program that is running or something? And I'm like, no, I haven't. But basically it was, as long as you can move, you can exercise. And yeah. so, so I, I was pushed by that just to, to keep on. And yeah, I would say that I'm kind of an up and down exerciser, but um, yeah, moving forward, it's definitely been something on my goals. I'm like, I really, my desire is to remain as healthy as I can for as long as I can. And so um, I feel really motivated in this season of life just to build that in as a good habit so I can model it for my tribe and beyond. So. That's great. Yeah, I, I find that exercising keeps me going. When I stop, I tend to feel a lot worse, you know, a lot more stiffness, can't move. And I just know, like in my mind, if I don't do it, I'm not going to feel as well as I could. So that, that kind of motivates me with exercising. But we have so much in common. <laughs> and that, you know, it just really is uh, fun to talk to you about it because we're different and we have different families. And you talked a little bit about your faith aspect and about God speaking to you when you were sick and um, just how you felt kind of angry with him. And I went through that too. And some people think that that's not okay to feel angry with God about our situation, but it's a natural process, I think, in our faith and to help us to grow and to wrestle with what's going on and God's character, right? Um, so, in your faith journey, like how did you, did you have anything that you purposely did to, um, I guess, stay connected with the Lord during that difficult time? Did you, uh, did you just wait to hear God speaking or were you always talking to him or how did that work out in your life? Hmm. Good question. Um, I, I was, became a friend of Jesus when I was little. And so and I'm pretty much a, I don't know, I'm a routine girl. So I knew that like spending time with God counted and mattered. So I started when I was in grade four and I've been really faithful. And um, so I think my, and obviously my walk with God has evolved over time and what that looks like. And I mean, it wasn't until college that I heard about listening prayer and that kind of thing. And then as I, um, which became instrumental actually in my chronic illness journey, because that was when I could share my frustration and then be still and have him speak to me or, or have a sense of his voice through even just verses that pop out or songs that came to mind. And I could recognize, Oh, okay, that's God nudging me back to truth. <laughs> oh, that's God. And so for me, um, I think that I probably during my illness, I definitely talked about tons. Um, definitely was praying because even, you know, how reading can be a struggle and take energy on good days. I definitely journaled and read the Bible, but music was huge because music, 
uh, yeah, you don't have to work. You just can hear it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can lay there and absorb it. Um, I found a few, um, I think CDs that had um, just scripture verses uh, into music. And that was like, so I'm like, oh, I need a peace one. I need this. And just to let that minister to me. Yeah. And um, yeah, so in my journey, I, I've come to know that when my heart starts to hum again, then I'm going to be okay. And so, so I had different little different little things in place that I knew would um, encourage me and bring me back to hope. And I guess also for a chunk there, um, talking about just allowing ourselves to feel what we feel. Like I, I would have said that I was telling people how I felt, but I think there was like a really deep underlying, like that mom guilt, like had compounded to the point of depression and suicidal thoughts. Mm. And, and so I was maybe sharing that, I'm struggling, blah, blah, blah. And people knew that, but they didn't know the depths of the, like, why am I even here? Like, I'm, I'm holding back my husband and my kids because I'm here. And so um, I, I have a walk-in closet <laughs> and it, it's not huge, but I would hide from the kids in there sometimes because they, I get a few minutes of silence or if I just needed to cry my head off and I didn't want them to ask me why. Um, but it was in there that I, I just would keep pouring my heart out to God. And eventually he, he met me in such a profound way during one of those sessions and was just like Andrew look up and I'm like I don't want to look up I just feel horrible for being in this place and I don't know how to get out and he's like look up so I did and he just poured out his love on me and was just like you do not feel guilty for being where you're at you this is where you are and I love you and that was definitely a, a turning point in my walk with him because I didn't have to work through is he mad at me for being where I am it was just more like this is where you are and he receives you where you are mm. and so it was very helpful. <laughs> wow, that's great. So now I think you're still, you have good days, bad days, maybe. I, I know I do. And where are you in your, in your health journey? Uh, my health journey has changed dramatically, actually. I, um, 2015, my brother passed away. 2016, um, his, his wife was started taking a supplement and that had some really good testimonies attached to it. So uh, God had brought me to a place where we'd, we'd been to, out of country for treatment. We'd, we had finally gotten a diagnosis that I had chronic fatigue syndrome, um, which was a huge day. And um, I'd managed my symptoms. And she, so she introduced the product to me and I was like, well, I've tried a zillion other things. And you know how it is when you've tried a lot of supplements and you spend a lot of money and you just, uh, but God had brought me to the place where I was looking at my supplements in my hand and going, I don't even know if any of these helped me. <laughs> like, maybe that one. And so I was willing to try something new. And little by little, I had my brain fog lifted and uh, my energy increased. And even just, I'd crash. I didn't, my blood sugar would go up and down. Um, those things have dissipated. And so I am living in freedom, living in healing right now. And I... I mean, I would love for that to stay forever. I don't know. <laughs> I'll mm -hmm. keep taking the supplements, but <laughs> um, I've also, even in the last six weeks, been really aware of um, that it can't, it, it, our bodies are tense, right? We, doesn't matter if my chronic illness part is, is healed. Um, I tweaked my back the other week and, and wow, that brought back a lot of memories and a lot of triggers and a lot of like, oh no, I'm not, it's like, take, take a breath, <laughs> just because you're hurt now doesn't mean, but that sense of being trapped in your body, and I, I just remember that, so it just came back so loud, and so, I don't know, I just want to tell anybody who's really just feeling trapped in your body, um, that I, I, it's a horrible feeling, <laughs> mm -hmm. and it needs to be grieved, and, and so I know in my journey, I, I did some grief counseling regarding my brother, and it ended up leading me actually back to my body journey and grieving the loss of what I thought my body would do for me um, throughout those um, child raising years. And um, just that, that is, yeah, just to, be, to, be, to look into those feelings because they really are there for a reason. Right. Um, I remember feeling like if something happened to me, like I, I, I couldn't call for help. So even like we got a security system in our house and I just needed that. And um, so I think just to be willing to be honest for what you need for to feel safe, especially when you don't have the ability to yell out or to push a button to get help. Um, those are important things to think through and give yourself permission to take care of you the best way possible. Yeah. 
And the feelings, the emotions that we can hold on to are so big. And I didn't even realize it until I also, um, I was talking to a friend, she's a naturopath. She's, I confide in her, you know, and ask her questions about nutrition and things like that. And she brought up the grief aspect of all that I lost because of my illness. And I thought, well, I'm not suffering from grief, but the more I looked into it and, and kind of um, read about it, I realized, yeah, there is that grief aspect to chronic illness because you do lose so much. You know, I lost 10 good years mm. um, and it, I didn't even realize that that was maybe still affecting me. And the emotional part of it, I think that we do have to work on throughout our illness, but also once we've gotten to a place of healing and just make sure that it's not um, still there, you know, because you can't fully heal unless you've taken care of every aspect of your health, especially your mind. (laughs) So that's so important. Okay. So you're, um, you have a book called From Freaking Out to Flying Free? Yes. Yep. It sounds great. I think I need this book. I don't freak out as much as I used to, but you know I'm a type A person and I used to freak out a lot. <laughs> but when I when I read the title, the thing that I thought was what you just mentioned about when you start to feel that your health is not in your control anymore and you start to feel like you're freaking out because, oh no, I can't go back into that place. That was my first thought. Um, is that kind of what the book is about or is it about managing daily life? Um, Well, that's the beauty of the book. In in there is the freedom framework. And so I I walk through really developing your self-awareness so that we acknowledge when our our freak out is rising up. And maybe it looks like just trying to control everything. Maybe it looks like yelling. Maybe it looks like super over planning. Um, But, or maybe it looks like pushing through. My my mode of operation was definitely often just to push through until it Mm -hmm. crashed. And so I talk about that a bit. And then I also just... Um, teach the four-step freedom framework that helps that has that God had been teaching me through that 15 years and I didn't clue in until he's like hey write a book on freedom I'm like what are you talking about <laughs> and, and then I'm like oh yeah you have been growing me in freedom and I could point to a bunch of different places in life where freedom was rising up and I was like why is that happening and he's like this, these are the four steps and so I share about um, yeah charging up with him and how and even just that the reality of for every freedom um, killer, there's a builder and he has, he has given us something to replace that negative attitude with gratitude or, and, and, and I'm really a practical girl. And so I wanted to develop really a handbook that people can use as a, just to put in their toolbox to be like, okay, so yeah, on a really bad day, where does my, where's my head going on a really good day? why is it so good? Like, is it really because I feel good or am I really leaning into Jesus? And it gives you the, I don't know, the steps you need just to navigate that. And it's really transferable and people can use it in any area of their life. So I do share parts of my journey, obviously in there, but I wanted it to be available for everyone because freedom is all for all of us, no matter what we're facing. Definitely. That's great. I, I'm going to get your book. I can't wait to go through it. I think this will be really good for me. <laughs> well, I just love talking to you, Andrea. I'm really thankful that we got to meet and get to know each other a little bit. And um, I just thank you for coming on my show and just let everyone know where they can find you. Um, you can find me at www.andreafair.com. And you can also find me on Facebook, um, Flying Free Ministries. So yeah, I'd love to connect. Okay, great. Thank you so much. And to everyone else, thank you for joining me today. And um, I will have all of the links and everything that we talked about in my show notes for you. So have a great day.